Senator Francis Black, in your five minutes. Um, I'd like to welcome the Minister and her officials to the Chamber, and I'm, I'm very glad that this discussion is happening today. It's long overdue. Um, I welcome the commitments to offer support and services to people who are resident in, in the homes, particularly in, in the areas of health and well-being. Uh, I, I think it's vital that the State has a clear duty in this regard, and we need to ensure proper support is provided. And I'd also like to commend the Commission itself for carrying out the work in a sensitive matter, and the Minister herself pushing the issue forward. Um, but as has been noted there was a delay in the publication of this report from when it was first completed in September and presented to the Minister until it was finally made available to the wider public seven months later. I don't think this level of delay is acceptable given the highly sensitive nature of the issue and the huge importance of the Commission's work to, to so many lives. We just cannot leave people in the dark. And in terms of this delay, the line from the Department is that Government spent this time discussing the legal and financial implications of the report. This seems to have amounted to seven months worrying about the potential cost of a redress scheme for people who were resident in these homes before the announcement last month that redress were not would not be offered at this time. This is deeply concerning. The report itself is clear that children who were resident at the homes have a real cause for grievance and haven't been excluded from redress schemes to date. It is clearer still in stating that logically children who were resident in the mother and baby homes and all county homes should be eligible to apply for redress in the same way and under the same conditions as the children covered by previous redress processes relating to the industrial schools and orphans. In essence, it is saying that the state should own up for the abuse carried out in these institutions, as it has had to do in the decades past. I don't think that this is a hugely controversial proposal. Now, we know that at this point the Commission is in the middle of its work and has not yet produced findings of abuse and neglect in the mother and baby homes. It's on this basis that the government has, called, has stalled on redress. But it seems deeply unfair and unsympathetic to respond by simply quoting the cost of previous themes schemes and essentially pouring cold water on people's hopes that a fair and just redress scheme can be rolled out if the final report is clear on instances of abuse. The Minister told Dáil Éireann last month that the Government has not closed off redress as an option, but there is a big difference between quoting the cost of redress and not ruling such a scheme out and offering a compelling humane commitment that the State will do right by the survivors of these institutions once the final report is published, including a potential redress scheme. This isn't simply about cost. This is about justice for people who have been subject to horrific mistreatment. Beyond this, I think survivors and former residents groups have been clear in that they want the government to step up here and to take ownership of what happened, to acknowledge the state's role in these institutions, its failure to provide the proper care for mothers and children, and to formally apologise. We should not underestimate how important such an apology can be for so many people, and I would urge the government to ensure the state does right by them in this regard. And finally, the Commission's final report is due in February. Before this point, I think two clear commitments need to be made. First, that survivors and past residence groups will be adequately engaged and listened to, and that their voices will be heard when requested. Secondly, that the agreed timetable will be stuck to. As has been noted, the delay in publishing the interim report caused a significant deal of stress for many people, and I would ask the Minister to commit to preventing further delays and ensuring that the Commission's findings will be published on schedule. I'm sorry, just finally one other thing. The First Mothers' Testimonies, the organisation First Mothers, have set up their own inquiry in order to gather the testimonies of the women who are in the homes. I would like to highlight some of the voices of the women in this chamber who have offered their testimonies during this process. One woman describes her experience of having an EP an episiotomy at the age of 14 without professional medical attention and denied pain relief over a labour that lasted over three days. That she physically survived such an experience is incredible. Having run away to London, determined to find a way to keep her child suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, she was tracked down and forced to sign adoption papers to give up her child, reflecting on her experiences, including the years where she suffered the weight of shame and judgment and the desire to find her son. She says, I often think if I had committed murder, I would not have got such a sentence. And these are the testimonies, and this is only one of the testimonies, uh, Minister. So I think it's time now for, for real serious and dramatic change.